welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is another business development focused one, but there is a reason for it. Since I would say November, December last year, I have been inundated with clients contacting me about business development. They're having challenges with their consultants, consultants are finding it difficult, people just want to make it a focus because over the last few years, it hasn't been. People have neglected it. It was a very job heavy market. Market. We were inundated with roles. Now things are starting to go back to normal and BD is becoming more challenging. It's a focus because we're not getting that influx of jobs. I wanted to focus on something today that is a huge part of business development and something that really creates that fear around interacting with our clients. So we're going to talk all about how to handle objections from your clients. I'm using the word objections instead of rejection for a reason. To me, an objection, no, let's word this differently so it makes more sense. To me, rejection from a client is more an objection. It's a not right now. It could be come back at a different time. It could be we haven't got the money for it at the moment. It could be loads of different things that they're not saying. We've got to read between the lines. We can experience objections from our clients at all different parts of the business development process. It could be over LinkedIn. It could be over the phone. It could be during a meeting. Who knows, over an email. We're going to experience it in lots of different ways. And whatever way it happens, sometimes, let's be honest, it bloody hurts. We're trying so hard hard to win clients, it's really difficult. We know deep down there is a need for us, but that client is just not seeing it. And some of us are more sensitive than others to this rejection. So one thing I will say, if you have the option to take a breather and reflect and come back to it, i.e. say you've experienced rejection or an objection over an email or a LinkedIn message and it hurts, take time and don't rush your response. The reason I say this is because it can sometimes affect your response, the emotions that you're feeling. So we wanna make sure we go back in the best possible way. If you're on the phone or you're in a meeting, obviously you don't have that luxury. You can't say to the client, can you just give me two minutes? I'm just gonna go and grab a cup of tea. On that note, I forgot I had a green tea and it's getting cold, so I'm gonna drink this as I talk to you. If you've got time, don't rush respond and you could have even read it wrong. Think about, reflect on what you're gonna do. There is a process that I teach any consultants that I train in how to deal with an objection. You can use this with your candidates as well. This is not just something that you can use a client if you like how it sounds and it works with clients, definitely bring it into your candidate activities as well. So, what is the cycle? First of all, we are going to listen, then we are going to empathise, then we are going to probe. Following that, we are going to provide a solution, then we're gonna close, and then we go back around again if we need to. I'm gonna go through each of these parts in detail, but basically, this flows in a circle. And the reason for that is because we might deal with an initial objection, get all the way to the close, and then a new objection comes up, and then we start the process all over again. Now, obviously, you may get to a point where you think, okay, I've had about a million of rejections and objections now. I think it's time to call it a day and I'll come back another time. But ultimately, if you do this well, it should alleviate you having to do this too many times. So let's go through each part in detail. The first one is listen. Listening is a skill. It takes practice. A lot of people think they are listening, but they're not. They're hearing what they're saying, but all they're thinking is, what am I gonna say next? They're not really taking on board what that person is saying. This can happen a lot with business development. We get in our heads a lot. We're panicking, oh my God, what am I gonna say next? What if I don't know what to say and my mind goes blank? And before we know it, we're not listening. And then that creates even more awkwardness because then we're like, oh shit, what did they just say? So you've gotta really make sure you listen to that objection and write down what they are saying because you need to put all of this in your CRM. It's really, really important. So if they say, look, we don't work with recruitment agencies. We never have done. We do everything internally. It's not what we want to do. I've listened to the fact they don't work with agencies, but what I'm also hearing in that answer is they've never tried. Me, I've got a little bit of buy-in here. There's some probing I can do around this. Some people who just hear that might be like, oh, so no, I'll just put the phone down and end the call. Absolutely not. There's more that we can do with this. Then we want to empathize. Empathizing with that and reflecting back what they've said shows them that we have listened as well. Then we get to the bit that is really important, which is probing. We want to ask lots of open questions and investigate this further. Let's use the same example. 
not using agencies because they never had. So I want to ask, what has been the main reasons you've not needed to use agencies? Because there could be more reasons than we've already found out. So let's explore them. If I haven't done it already, what I now want to do is also probe around, how have you typically filled your roles? How long has it taken you to fill them? How much time is that taken away from your day-to-day -day job being so heavily involved in the recruitment? How do you advertise? Where do you find these candidates? How long do they stay for? What quality are they like? I mean, you can do so much probing around this, it's insane. Because it might just be that somebody's told them not to use agencies, they're rubbish. Or maybe they did try an agency before and they had a bad experience. I want to find out more about that. If they've done everything internally and it's taken them ages to fill everything and it's a faff and the manager is getting stressed because he or she has limited time to manage their day job, great, lots of buying signals here. So once we've probed, we can then provide solutions. There's no point providing solutions until we probe to find out what the needs are, really what is going on with this objection. This part is where we show we've listened and come back with solutions or a solution to help overcome that objection. So for example, if the business is saying, we don't use recruitment agencies, we do it all ourselves. You probe around it and you actually uncover that it's come down to somebody telling them that recruitment agencies aren't great to work with. And actually they did try an agency years ago, but it didn't go very well. They only tried them for a week. You can then, after probing them, come back with a solution of, look, it sounds like from speaking to you, that bad experience a while ago has obviously left you with a bad taste in your mouth. You're now doing all your own recruitment, but from chatting to you, what I'm hearing is that it's taken up a lot of your time, it's taken a lot of your resources, it's taken you quite a long time to fill those jobs. That's a big stress on the business. And ultimately what that then is meaning is you're being dragged away from your role to do more recruitment. The solution for that would be we take over that and we do X, Y, and Z and you start selling in what you offer as a consultant, what your business offers, how you're gonna save them time, all of that good stuff. This part also shows them that you have listened. If you're providing solutions to the problems they've told you about, they aren't gonna feel like you're selling to them at all. They're gonna know that you have taken that step back, let them talk and heard what they've really said. That goes a long, long way. Following that, you get to the part of the call we're gonna close. This is where you might say something like, look, based on that, would you be happy to let us work on that role for you and show you how we can support you or whatever you want to say? We need a clear yes or no to this answer. We need them to confirm if they want to go ahead or not. If at this point, they come back with another objection, as I said earlier in the video, you go back around that cycle again and you do that until you feel comfortable or they feel comfortable. And that's it basically. That is a really great way of flow chart that you can apply to your calls to handle objections. It helps you know where to go with it because look, there's always times where we get an objection thrown at us and it, it throws us literally. And we can have that split second thought of, oh God, I don't know what to say, so I'll just end the call there. And we're missing out on so much opportunity. So apply this to your calls, all interactions, emails, LinkedIn, whatever. Ever, let me know how you get on and how it works. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you are struggling in general with objections from clients and it's really affecting you and you want some extra support, I do have limited slots available for private mentoring. If you want to invest in your own training and development or you'd like a little workshop, get in touch with me and I can let you know how I can help and support. Remember guys to press that subscribe button, allow your notifications, you'll get all my videos as soon as they're loaded notified in your YouTube feed straight away, as well as my LinkedIn lives, which also then get loaded onto the channel. They're great. I have lots of different guests and we talk about lots of different recruitment subjects very openly and honestly as well. Any comments you've got on today's video, any questions, chuck them in the comments box. And as normal, connect with me on LinkedIn, follow me on Instagram. I love keeping in touch with you guys. I just want to thank you all for watching today's video. Keep your eyes peeled for the next one and I will see you soon. Bye.